Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students. So myself Dr. Ajay Samalti from HNB Gadwal University, Srinagar Gadwal again welcome you in our series of lecture on NOAA degree systems. Today we will be discussing nanotechnology and nanoparticles. We will be addressing the lecture or we will be addressing this topic in series of two lectures. Two in two parts it will be there. So let us open up our discussion on the nanotechnology which is the future, which is the current and the future of the science. After completing this lecture, you will be able to identify the importance of nanotechnology, enumerate the properties of nanoparticles and prepare the nanoparticles. We will be addressing, we will be covering this lecture under the head's concept, importance and origin of nanotechnology, then properties of nanomaterials and then methods of preparation of nanomaterials and nanoparticles. You know, nanotechnology is the creation of functional materials, materials which have a specific function, devices and systems, functional materials, functional devices and functional systems. Through the understanding and control of matter, at dimensions in the narrow scale from 1 to 100 nanometer where the new functionalities and properties of matter are observed and harnessed for a broad range of application. Nanotechnology is a cross-sectional technology with influence on almost all industries and it enables new product properties and is leading to and will lead to new applications in attractive market. What is the nanotechnology? Actually, this is the manipulation of the matter at the nanoscale, nanometer scale, 1 to 100 nanometers, to create the novel structures, novel devices, and novel systems. Three things novel structures, novel devices, and the novel systems. Now, let me give you a brief history that it was there in the late Roman 4th century AD. This extraordinary cup, which is which you are seeing here, okay, which you are seeing here, it is the complete example of very successful type of uh, you know, nanotechnology. Uh, it's a uh, it's a type of glass known as dichroic, which changes the color when held up to the light. The opaque green cup, this opaque green cup, turns into a this glowing translucent red when light is fallen on it the glass the glass contains tiny amount of colloidal gold and silver and this is responsible for this by uh, this optical activity and this is the actually the uh, you know you can see that from the late roman 4th century AD we are using it now we move to the mystery of nanotechnology 2000 years ago, you know, sulfide nanocrystals used by the Greek and Romans to dye the hairs. Uh, in the 1000 years ago, gold nanoparticles of different size used to produce different colors in stainless glass windows, you know, uh, in Iranian uh, sculptures and Iranian uh, technology, the people used to prepare these kind of glasses. Uh, at 1959, there was a very, you know, nice statement where that there is a there is a plenty of room there is a plenty of room at the bottom there is a plenty of room at the bottom as you can see here okay by r feynman nanotechnology taguchi used the term first time the nanotechnology this term ibm developed the scanning talenting microscope and thereafter you can see that ibm logo was uh, made with individual atoms in 1989 the carbon nanotubes were discovered 
1999 nano medicine first nano medicine was uh, was uh, you know that book was by the r fetus and in 2000 national nanotechnology mission was launched and you know have at this time several nanotechnology initiatives and the nanotechnology projects are going on uh, in indian scenario also apart from the global scenario now what to speak of molecular nanotechnology it is intersectional you know it is interdisciplinary it is multidisciplinary topic multidisciplinary field of research which involves physics chemistry biomedicine pharmacy engineering and put together uh, the nanotechnology has got various application which is uh, affecting the uh, you know the quality and affecting the uh, you know current status of the that particular science nanotechnology key factors particle size morphology degree of crystallization crystal structure and chemical composition these are the five major key factors on which the nanotechnology you no know, revolves around the key factors are as far as the driving force is concerned chemical kinetics and thermodynamics are the two important driving forces now let's see some basic rules uh, and basic things you know these are just the representative figures we am showing, showing you that smaller means nearer and quicker to connect to big football centers and the centers of two nuclei it means nearer it is quicker it is to contact smaller means more reactive sugar crystals versus sugar powder you can see that the crystals may take most time may take the uh, more time as compared to the amorphous form simple powder form they dissolve quickly just a simple it's a representative figure okay so smaller means more reactive higher contact point will be there so the reaction will be more but smaller means higher surface area i would like to add on the for the previous slide also that the however it depends on the nature of drug that whether you are if decreasing the size the you know solubility will increase or not and the nanoparticle especially you know, this uh, is entirely different scenario but in general we have seen you know it was a representative thing only just to have you the concept but now we are talking about the surface area let's see this example we have a cube of a, a dice a simple cube you can say 1.7 cm side each what we are going to do we are going to cut it three times horizontally vertically and tra transversal and repeat this cutting for each cube 24 times what you will get you will get the cubes which are of 1 nanometer scale you know the number of what number of nanometer you know, the cubes you will get what surface you can cover the entire in standard football ground with this layer of cubes which you have obtained by this process it means enormous surface area they are having the surface area to volume ratio is very high this is the peculiar phenomena this is a specific phenomena for the nanoparticles and the nanotechnology has got this beauty of giving the enormous surface area now let's discuss the properties of nanomaterial because if before going to know or before going to address the preparation methods we must know what are the properties of nanomaterials because these are the properties which make them uh, applicable for various industries various applications so we will have to understand what are the unique properties the nanomaterials are having why nanoparticles are different first let's understand that nanoparticles are different from bulk materials and isolated molecules in various properties like unique having the unique optical properties electronic properties chemical properties and mechanical properties also as the dimensions of the material is reduced what is happening the electro uh, that electronic properties changes drastically as the density of states and the spatial length scale of the electronic motion are reduced the electron confinement is there when you are decreasing the size closely related to size induced change in the electronic structure uh, are the optical properties of nanomaterials size size effects that size effects are mm, giving the peculiar and fascinating aspect to the nanomaterials size does affect the effects 
determined by the size quotient to the evolution of structure, thermodynamics, electronics, spectroscopic, electromagnetic, and chemical features of these finite system with changing size. Now, these properties are gonna be changed. Nanoscale size effect. How the nano size particles will or nanomaterials will have the unique property. They will have the unique properties. They will have a unique uh, changes in the physical properties like melting point, chemical properties like reactivity, electro electrical properties like conductivity, uh, mechanical property like strength, optical properties like light emission. So these properties are going to be drastically changed. Now let's take the example of uh, size effect on the gold particles. As you can see, as you can see, the bulk gold material, the, this bulk gold material is of this size, okay? This uh, this color, that yellow color. So gold particles of 30 to 500 nanometer are generally the crimson to blue. These are the two colors from 30 to 500 nanometer if you move. Now, when we are decreasing the particle size to 3 to 30 nanometer, it this color of the same gold is now red and metallic transparent. While if you go to the one nanometer scale, then it will be the gold cluster will look like this, this orange, non-metallic one. While in the angstrom level, it will be colorless. One angstrom level, it is colorless. The properties of a material depend on the type of motion in uh, electron or type of motion of its electrons. Now, and what electron can execute, which depends on the space available for them. Electron confinement is happening there. Thus, the properties of a materials are characterized by a specific length scale, usually on the nanometer dimension. If the physical size of the material is reduced below this length scale, its properties change and become sensitive to size and shape. So the electron confinement is basically mm, the responsible for these properties. Melting temperature. You know, when we go to the uh, nano size, the surface energy increases, and this increase in uh, surface energy increases and melting point decreases. Say, for example, three nanometer of cadmium selenium nanocrystal melts at 700 Kelvin, while uh, in the bulk, the same uh, melting point is 1678 Kelvin. Can you imagine the huge difference? Yes. Melting point, if you say for the gold. Uh, the melting point of gold particle decreases dramatically as the particle size gets below the 5 nanometer. As you can see, uh, say for example for 10 nanometer, 10 nanometer it is around 1000 uh, degrees Celsius. While for 5 nanometer it is 800 or uh, up, uh, and while you go for the 3, it uh, while you go for the 2, it is just 500 degree Celsius. So you can imagine that how drastically it is, it is drastical uh, decrease is there this the dip in melting point is there depending on the particle size after the 5 nanometer scale okay you can see the change an electron confinement we can see from when the uh, bulk material is reduced to uh, in size its orientation of the uh, electron movement is confined from three direction to two directional to one direction and then zero direction and that's why it is called bulk quantum well quantum wire and quantum dots because the, the quantum confinement, the electron confinement is there. Depending on these factors, depending on this electronic confinement, the properties get changed. And ultimately, this quantum dot is the uh, complete confinement of this electron. There are different types of nanomaterials. They may be nanopowder, nanotube, nanopowder, you know, they are building blocks less than 100 nanometer in diameter, CNT, you know, uh, they are tiny strips of graphite, uh, which are sheet rolled into tubes, uh, a few nanometer in diameter and up to 100 uh, of microns in size, of length. So, micron size length and nano size diameter, okay. These are the various types of nano formulations. We can prepare the in the nano size. If we say that we can prepare the micelles, we can uh, we can prepare the uh, we can prepare this. Uh, you know, we can prepare we can prepare this uh, micelles. Now, what are the advantages of polymeric nanoparticles? Increase the stability. We can increase the stability with the help of the nanotechnology. 
of any volatile pharmaceutical agents easily and cheaply fabricated in large quantities um, significant improvement over the traditional or um, and oral and iv methods of administration for increase in effectiveness and uh, efficiency it delivers a higher concentration at the site of action or the desired location and uh, it is ideal candidate for cancer therapy delivery of vaccine contraceptives and delivery of targeted antibiotics we can play we can uh, design different polymeric systems for polymeric nanoparticles for these various uh, therapeutic actions polymeric nanoparticles they can be easily incorporated into other act activities like the drug delivery tissue engineering etc now we are moving to preparation of nanomaterials what kind of approach we may be we may have the two approaches bottom up approaches and top down approach so bottom approach means from building blocks we are preparing nanoparticles okay and top down means from the bulk we are cutting it for to up to the level of nanoparticle so these are the two basic approaches okay and different method uh, may be there uh, for for bottom up and top down as you can see here so methods of nanosynthesis they are basically if you classify physical and chemical they are the two methods in physical methods carbon arc laser ablation vapor trapping in chemical methods sono chemistry you know yeah, this uh, these are the sono chemistry sono chemistry microwave synthesis hydrothermal uh, methods micro encapsulation sol gel methods you know wet chemical uh, precipitation wet chemical co precipitation these are the methods by which we can prepare the nano materials nanoparticles uh, preparation methods as we have discussed that they may be bottom up and top up synthesis this is the flow diagram which we have taken from this reference which is of great common so you can uh, also adapt it for so bottom approaches these are the approaches spinning template support uh, plasma i am not going to the detail of each and every technique we will be discussing uh, we will be focusing our discussion on the biomedical or you can say pharmaceutical nanoparticle only so their top down synthesis may be done by the mechanical milling chemical etching uh, sputtering laser ablation and electro explosion okay as far as the core shell nanoparticle are concerned they uh, to attach the various active functional the core shell nanoparticle can be developed they may be developed as organic inorganic or the biomolecule can be developed at the core shell nanoparticle Uh, in the surface of nanostructures we can put the uh, these biomolecules and coating this nanostructures may be coated by another material by, to form a core shell structure and they are called core at shell so core ke, uh, core ke, core is uh, you can say colored and uh, fluorescent it may be add uh, magnet it may be magnetic drug reservoir empty okay now moving to the nanoparticle synthesis in the nanoparticle synthesis the most important and most uh, you know pioneer you can say the very pioneer uh, study was in 1968 by the stober in which in which uh, silicon nanoparticles uh, were synthesized by the addition of precursor tetrahydroxy uh, tetrahydroxysilane into alkaline ethanol as we can see the synthesis proceeds through hydrolysis condensation reactions ammonia hydroxide we are adding to this uh, absolute ethanol and the tus with the stirring at 3 to 30 hours the nanoparticles are achieved so this stober process is very popular um, in the nanoparticle research it's a very simple prepare it provides a very simple preparation methods and uh, spherical non porous particles of diameter ranging from 20 to 100 nanometer uh, can be achieved with this and uh, narrow size distribution there poly dispersion is very good uh, uniform uniformity is very good there okay so easy surface functionalization can be done with silanes okay. so now moving to the methods in pharmaceutical nano formation development it is not it is not a cup of tea of everyone it is not a cup of tea of everyone i would like to emphasize that developing nano particles uh, is a very typical task you know uh, for the synthesis sometimes it very severe but when you are specially preparing for the organic nanoparticles uh, it is a uh, it is a art as well as a science you know you have to control various factors inorganic nanoparticles are quite easier to develop rather okay but when you are adding the functionalities there it becomes a challenge okay for site of site of action for desired targeting for uh, desired localization into the site so let's see one them one by one 
Dispersion of drug in preformed nanoparticle is the first approach. And second approach is polymerization. First, in the, this first approach, the methods involved are solvent evaporation. Okay, they are the solvent evaporation there. Uh, solvent solvent evaporation nano is this nano precipitation emulsification ESD emulsification solvent diffusion sorting out dialysis and supercritical fluid technology okay while in the polymerization emulsion mini emulsion micro emulsion interfacial polymerization and, and the uh, the controlled polymerization or living radical polymerization okay these are the technologies which we'll be discussing first is solvent evaporation method so in the, what we are doing is similar so these are the uh, in this study in this method polymer solution are prepared in volatile solvents they are prepared in the uh, the uh, volatile drug and polymer solution are taken and uh, uh, their uh, emulsions are formulated this o emulsion are formulated and these emulsions the these the emulsion is converted into a nanoparticle suspension nanoparticle suspension on evaporation of the solvent for the polymer which is allowed to diffuse through the continuous phase of the emulsion this esd is done and freeze drying is done and then the nanoparticles are obtained so so two main particle two main strategies we may have uh, the oil and water uh, emulsification or the multiple emission we can prepare and then uh, for the high with the after with the high speed homogenization ultrasonification followed by the evaporation of the solvent at room temperature under reduced pressure uh, the solidified nanoparticle can be collected by the ultra centrifugation and washed with the distilled water to remove the, to remove the uh, the other additives such as surfactant finally to produce the, this lyophilized nanoparticle okay this is the simplest method and the most common method which is which is used for the nanoparticle preparation nano precipitation method it's a basically it's a uh, also called a solvent displacement method what we are doing here that we are taking the organic solution polymer in, uh, and drug and surfactant are taken it involves the precipitation of a preformed polymer uh, from a organic solution from an organic solution and the diffusion of the organic solvent in the aqueous medium uh, in the presence or absence of surfactant okay the polymer generally pl is dissolved in water it is dissolved in water and miscible solvent of intermediate polarity leading to the precipitation of nanosphere this phase is injected into a it is injected into a stirred aqua solution containing a stabilizer as a surfactant polymer deposition in the interface between the water and the organic solvent caused by the uh, fast diffusion of the solvent leads to the instantaneous formation of a colloidal suspension okay this colloidal suspension basically it is applicable to the lipophilic drugs because of the miscibility of the solvent with the aqua phase and it is not efficient means to encapsulate water soluble drugs so this is all about the nano precipitation method as you can see now the modified version of solvent evaporation method is the esd that emulsification solvent diffusion method in this method the encapsulated polymer is dissolved this encapsulated the aqueous surfactant solution and the polymer solution they are taken uh, put together they are dissolved in a partially water soluble solvent such as uh, propylene carbonate and saturated with uh, water they are saturated with water okay they are saturated with water and uh, to ensure the initial thermodynamic equilibrium of both the liquids then what we will do the emulsification will be the same next step uh, in which the oil and water emulsion, emulsion is uh, prepared and then uh, the then the solvent diffusion is done by the by the polymer precipitation the purification cross flow filtration is done and then after the freeze drying the uh, the polymeric nanoparticles can be obtained okay now the organic so uh, if you uh, go to the sorting out effect it is uh, a a very easy method it is based on the separation of a water miscible solvent uh, from aqua solution via sorting out effect via sorting out effect the organic solution polymer drug in acetone we are taking and the aqua solution the we are adding st stabilizer and sorting out uh, agent in water these sorting out agents are like magnesium chloride calcium chloride and magnesium acetate or non electrolyte such as sucrose so this oil water emulsion is diluted with a uh, diluted with a sufficient volume of water or aqua solution to enhance the diffusion of acetone into the uh, into the aqua space thus inducing the formation of nanospheres in the last as far as the sorting out is concerned 
it has got the advantages that it minimizes the stress to uh, protein encapsulants and uh, it is suitable for the thermolabile substances does not because it does not require any increase of temperature so very useful disadvantages include the it is exclusively only for the lipophilic drugs and the extensively uh, there is the extensive nanoparticle uh, washing steps are there so that's why only for the lipophilic drugs uh, it is useful now moving to the dialysis as the name suggests there is a dialysis membrane a simple and effective step uh, effective method is the polymer solution uh, is of drug polymer solution uh, small narrow uh, is put into the small narrow uh, uh, sorry in the this dialysis membrane polymer is dissolved in an organic solvent and placed inside this dialysis tube with proper molecular weight cut off dialysis is performed uh, and against a non solvent miscible with the former miscible the displacement of the solvent inside the membrane is followed by the progressive aggregation of the polymer due to loss of solubility and uh, the formation of homogeneous this uh, you will get the homogeneous suspension of nanoparticle you will get at the last stage okay so dialysis in the dialysis tube what we are doing polymeric uh, solution in the organic solvent we are adding we are adding this and in the dialysis and then after that after dialysis it's a uh, suspension is homogeneous suspension of nanoparticles is obtained now spray drying method spray drying is uh, what we are doing here you are to um, the drug solution suspension in polymer solution is atomized uh, with the help of atomizer the in the liquid nitrogen and the frozen nanoparticles are obtained and solvents can be uh, you know ex extracted in the spray drying method other method coservation phase separation as you have learned in the micro capsules uh, in your previous classes that Uh, with any change in phase separation can be done with either by the temperature change ph change salt addition non solvent what will do protein echo solution that phase change is done and the uh, with the help of stirring stirring probe sonication and protein nanoparticle precipitation is done and the cross linking with the help of either a chemical or enzymatic cross linking is done to get the cross linked nanoparticles so this is the another method Uh, this is uh, and it is common you know it is common for the micro capsule micro spheres and nanoparticle all depends on the this speed of uh, homogenization or you know the stirring speed what we are providing supercritical fluid method as we have discussed uh, it is a very advanced technology there are two major technologies there ress and uh, one technology is ress and resolv resolve in ress it is called rapid expansion of uh, supercritical solution it involves expansion of the supercritical solution in ambient air okay while in re in resolve this expansion is into into a liquid solvent which is called resolve okay first is ress second is resolve so by this method uh, the liquid uh, solvent apparently suppresses the particle growth in expansion jet thus making it possible to obtain primarily nano sized particle the high degree of Uh, super saturation accompanied by the rapid pressure reduction in the expansion result in homogeneous nucleation and thereby the formation of well dispersed particles we can have by this method either the ress method or resolve method okay these are two different uh, sub methods of uh, supercritical fluid anti solvent method and gas anti solvent method so, uh, so these two methods have also been discussed in the uh, previous lectures again with the use of anti solvent like carbon dioxide uh, the supercritical fluid uh, we can use this technology polymeric anionization method anionic uh, polymerization method what we are doing the monomer uh, and drugs that uh, are um, taken together and then acidic medium in the presence of uh, surfactant or stabilizer the polymerization occurs and then purification step is done and nanoparticles can be prepared okay so this is uh, one of the methods of polymerization however the, as far as the polymerization is concerned we have discussed in detail in our previous lecture uh, in developing the uh, other microparticles this was these are the references you can go ahead uh, some example uh, some especially these uh, references we are giving however there are so many references on no adaptive systems and this uh, aspect now let me summarize what we have learned as we know the nanotechnology is the is the not only the future it is the current uh, science 
yeah it is the you know um, hot discussion this is the center point of uh, attraction for the various fields of research not only the biomedical pharmacy medicine chemistry physics engineering all the scientists of all the discipline are working very uh, effectively and very uh, with the enthusiasm to develop new structures system and devices of from the nanotechnology and the range within the range of 1 to 100 nanometer the nano size this nano size is basically the driving force for the change in the properties like physical properties chemical properties electro uh, electronic properties its conductivity okay, mechanical strength so all these properties including the color we have optical activity we have addressed okay, the gold film example you might uh, remember then there are two basic approaches bottom up and top down approaches then preparation of drug dispersion in formulation and um, uh, dispersion in preformed nanoparticles and polymerization are the two basic techniques in the preparation of drug dispersion in preformed nanoparticles we have discussed the sub techniques there like the solute removal uh, the eds and the salting out you know these are the technologies which we have uh, the methods we are salting out we have discussed so let's remember these technologies apart from this uh, polymerization technique we also discussed in the micro particles also we have discussed these techniques so what is required from exam point of view defining the nanoparticle what are the properties of uh, basic properties of uh, nanoparticles thirdly the methods of preparation the classification top down bottom up and then the two different uh, classification and their sub techniques we must know you won't have much time uh, if you will try to address each and every uh, method and you uh, you are trying to write in sentences i again emphasize that uh, the give your power pack presentation with the help of uh, with the help of flow diagrams ray diagrams and the concise tables whenever it is required so we will be discussing the uh, further part of the nanoparticle technology or you know nanotechnology in our next lecture and we'll be coming back with the characterization and the application part in our next lecture thank you for being with us hope i have addressed all your queries and we'll be coming back with the next lecture on nanotechnology and nanoparticle